When getting the Rokin on 135 millimeter, one huge downside to using this lens is that if you don't have a decent mounting solution, then you have to rely on the mounting point of your DSLR. In this video, we're gonna go over the Astrodymium rings for the 135 millimeter Rokinon, and we're gonna go ahead and get it put together. If you're, say, using a full-size mount, a little bit of overmounting, and you wanna mount it on maybe an HEQ5 Pro, then you have to put it on a dovetail anyway. Screwing the camera right into the dovetail can work, but it can also come loose, and you might not exactly be perfectly aligned with the dovetail. You might be just a little bit off. And it might not be 100% secure since there's only one screw holding the whole thing together. So the first thing is, what exactly is in this box? So I have the one that has the mounting plate for the autofocuser. I'm not gonna put that on just yet, because I only have one autofocuser and that's going on my telescope. I also didn't get a mounting point for an ASI Air, but luckily those don't cost very much to add to this system, so. I will be adding that as well. But for now, let's get this set up as if you're just using a DSLR. All right, and what's in the box for this one is quite a few things here. So they send you what you need to attach to the lens to get the focuser working, which is pretty awesome in itself, but we're not gonna use the belt or anything like that right now. And here's the mounting plate for the autofocuser, so we're not really gonna use it, but I have it for when I'm ready for it. Now you have two rings that go around the lens itself and you note there are two different sizes as well because of the mounting points on where they would actually go on the lens itself. So you have the smaller one which goes towards the back of the lens and the bigger one which goes toward the front of the lens. And for the top you have a rail that actually spaces everything out perfectly but it also has a Vixen dovetail holder so you can put a guide scope on it. And one nifty thing is they also send some candy. Uh, I've seen a couple others that come with different candy. Apparently I got white mystery airheads in this one. And the last thing is a couple screws to actually put everything together. Okay, and the reason that it does come with candy is apparently it's an Agena Astro thing, so it's not Astrodemium per se, but Agena Astro does that. And they're a pretty good shop to buy things from. I've had pleasant experiences with them each time I've gotten some. So for now, because I'm not using these, I'm just gonna toss these back in the box. And I'm actually gonna keep this out because I will need to reference it a couple times. We can just go ahead and close the box and get it off to the side. So the first thing we want to take a look at is actually the rings themselves. If you notice, on one side there is a single hole and on another side there are three holes. The way this works is the single hole side, that's where the rail goes and the three hole side, that's what you put on your dovetail. So with this kit, with the autofocuser attachment, it comes with one bag with all of the screws and everything else you need except for these two. So the two with the black knob on them, those are actually for screwing it together and holding it onto the lens. That way you can quickly and easily remove it from the lens and store the lens in your camera bag. But to actually put it all together, you need to put these square nuts into these rings. These rings are 3D printed, so they have to come with these little square nuts just to make sure everything screws together nicely. So what we will do is go ahead and get them dumped out. And the way this works is there are two big ones. Those go in the bottom of the plate and you just push those in. That way you can screw this right into your dovetail. Put the other one in here. And you might have to use like a hex key or something just to push it until the hole is actually flush. Now for the top side and for the mounting point for the EAF or an ASI Air holder, there are five extra little square nuts there that you'll have to just go ahead and put in. And even if you're not gonna get an ASI Air holder or the EAF holder right away, I would still just go ahead and get those put in. So there are two on the smaller one and three on the bigger one. And the reason for the bigger one is the bigger one is the one that holds the autofocuser and 
the smaller one is the way that the ASIR stays on. Now one thing that comes in handy is some type of screwdriver kit. These little pry things that we use uh, in IT to pry apart laptops come in handy for something just like this. So I can get these pushed in all the way. Another advantage of this kit that I have, this one is basically just a precision screwdriver set off of Amazon, but it comes with the right hex key that you actually need to get this all screwed together. And this one is 3.5 millimeters. So to get it all put together, you grab one of the rings, I grabbed the large one and the rail and one of the screws and I already put one in the rail just to make it a little bit easier to line up and just screw it in. And take care right, right now, not to tighten it up too tight, just a little bit for now, let it move around. That way you can actually get this all lined up. And then we'll do the same thing with the other side. And, and remember, make sure you're using the single hole side, not the one with three holes. And get that all screwed together. And for now, I'm also leaving a little bit of wiggle room until I get this put on the dovetail. So the last part of this is something I would watch out for. Typically when you get your dovetail from the manufacturer, it might come a little bit too big for this or too small. This is the one that comes with the HEQ5 Pro and you'll see that the holes don't quite line up and this little bevel in here doesn't really make it match very well. And the same thing with the William Optics brand, the holes don't even line up at all. So what I recommend is this dovetail that you can get on Amazon that is completely flat on top and has multiple mounting points which can help with getting things screwed together. Now luckily this ring system comes with the perfect size screw to fit into this dovetail, dovetail so you can just put those in there and tighten them down. And for these, you actually do need a larger hex wrench. For this one, it is a five millimeter hex wrench. Just for symmetry for now, I'll keep it balanced. But once I get it mounted on the mount, I may adjust just a little bit. And one of the reasonings that I said don't tighten everything down just yet is that I actually neglected to do something. So I didn't pay attention to where the holes were to actually open it up and put the lens in. So it does matter which side that they are on. So when you put, get this lined up together, what you want to do is make sure that the screws where you can actually release the lens are on the right as you're behind the lens. And both points for the ASI Air are on the left if you are going to use that plate and the autofocuser will go on the right side right next to the knob that you would use to open this up. Once you have it all lined up and put together, just make sure it's balanced and then go ahead and open it up and put the lens in it. And hopefully putting the lens in it too will help illustrate what I mean. Now before we put the lens in the rings itself, what method do you usually use if you use a 135 millimeter lens? Do you use something like that? Have you found another source? Maybe another awesome ring system that holds it all together? Either way, let me know down in the comments below. When you put the lens in here, you wanna make sure it's on the ring where you select your aperture, so your f-stop. And then the bigger end will be right on the edge of the lens itself, right before putting on the dew shield. You can just go ahead and close this up. The next thing to do is screw it down with the thumb screws. And the other thing with this is when you go to screw your screws in that hold the clamp together, you actually want to come in from the bottom and screw it in that way. That way it catches the metal on top and pulls it all together. There's a little nut in there that it needs to contact. And if you go in from the bottom, it'll contact that and keep everything nice and tight. And then you can just push the lens back towards you if you're sitting it this way and just make sure everything's where it needs to be and tighten everything down. So get the rail tightened down and then go underneath and get the dovetail tightened down. And where you put the dovetail is completely up to you if you wanna balance it or not, but you're gonna need to keep a five millimeter hex wrench in your kit to adjust this. 
or use different screws that maybe use a regular Phillips head. Now that it's all put together, a few things you should know about this. You can loosen it up and do a, a slight bit of camera rotation with your DSLR, but you're not going to get a whole heck of a lot of rotation out of it. All right, they do make risers to get this up off the dovetail so that way you can fully rotate your camera. So if you want, on the Astrodymium website, they have all the selections with the risers, without the risers, uh, with the ASI air, air kit, without the ASI air kit. Just know that if you're using a DSLR set up exactly like this, you're not gonna be able to rotate very far. But now you can put this on a Skywatcher Star Adventure and actually have it balanced. So the balance point would be more around here. So a little bit further up from where, the bat, from where the mounting point is on the body of the camera itself. And when you go to put the camera on here with the lens, put the lens on the camera first and then put it in here. Cause if you try to actually mount it with the lens already in here, it's not gonna work out very well. Now, first thing offhand that I already see as kind of a downside getting this put together too, is that it doesn't leave a whole lot of room for a dew strap. Now you can still put one maybe right here underneath the very front and it would keep your front, your lens warm enough, but I will have to test that or you'd have to put it on the hood and hope it actually transfers the heat to the lens. The other downside that I see with this system is depending on the model of DSLR that you are using. Depending on where the battery bay is, if you're gonna be changing batteries, it might make it a little bit of a pain to get to where you get to the battery. So if your battery bay is not on the side like it is with the Canon T7i, I would highly recommend that you get the size with the risers so you can get under there and change your batteries or if you have to change the memory card if it's not an easy to access spot. All in all, this is a great little mounting system for the Rokin on 135 and it keeps everything nice and compact and is great for the grab and go system. But either way, if you found this video helpful, please do like, comment, and then maybe consider subscribing. I wanna thank you for watching. Clear skies.